Hi, good afternoon, goedemiddag. Uh, welcome, welcome at our uh, webinar that uh, has the topic of marketing automation where to start. My name is uh, Armanda Kusse, but I'll introduce myself a bit more later on. And today we're gonna have the webinar. It will take about 30 to 45 minutes. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat. If you look at your right, which is that way for you, um, you have like this scroll down menu and there you have a button underneath handouts that says chat. And if you open that, you can actually write down your question. Um, we'll try to confirm them in between that we've read them. And then at the end of the webinar, we'll answer all of your questions. Uh, we're gonna do that so that people that have a time schedule to hold on to can actually leave the webinar. Um, but feel free to write them in the chat anyway. So hopefully you have fun and you'll get the information that you were hoping for. Um, and please feel free to give us feedback uh, anytime because you're more than welcome to have them. All right, I'm going to mute myself now and I'm gonna, um, we're gonna let's get started and I'm gonna keep, give the word to Josephine who will start the introduction. Perfect, thank you so much, Armanda. Uh, again, very warm welcome to everyone joining this afternoon. My name is Josephine and I work here at Lime Technologies. Uh, I'm representing one of the departments called Lime Intense, focusing a lot on behaviors. One type of behavior is, of course, how we behave in our marketing. Another can be our sales behaviors and our leadership behaviors. So I'm from that side of the, or the organization, and I'm here today to talk to you about how we can create everything from loyalty and the right behaviors when it comes to our customers. And Armanda, who are you? Yes, yeah, thank you. My name is Armanda Kusa. I work as a country sales manager in the Netherlands in the office in Utrecht. Um, I've been selling CRM for about more than 10 years now. We've been working at Lie in the Netherlands since the beginning, which is one and a half year. And I'm here to represent the Lime CRM department. Um, CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management, which is a tool where you can actually store the data of the people. Um, a lot of salespeople use it. Um, and that's why I'm here to give the, the sales side of the input uh, as well. And my name is Cleo, and I'm a product manager here at Lime, working with our marketing products, uh, and recently our newest marketing automation product called Automated Flows. Uh, I'm American, uh, so originally from the US, but I've been living in Sweden for the past three years and now work in our Gothenburg office. Uh, so let's kick off today's webinar, uh, and so we can take a look at the agenda for today. Uh, so we're going to be exploring marketing automation from a strategy and a culture perspective. So we're taking a look at how organizations can basically start to mobilize internally to support marketing initiatives so that way you can meet the needs of your audience. Uh, and so to do that, we're going to go over the basics of what is marketing automation and how it relates to strategy and culture how it's based off of understanding our customers. So who are they, what do they want, and what is their buying process? And how this in turn can lead to customer loyalty and turning customers into customer ambassadors. And finally, we'll be wrapping all of that up with some tips and tricks to help you start taking action uh, after today. So let's take a few minutes to review what is marketing automation and just set the baseline for this webinar so everybody here is on the same page. And in general, marketing automation isn't just a product or a type of software that you can get up and running today and start expecting results tomorrow. Marketing automation requires a strategy and a lot of thought behind how you're going to be using it in order to be successful in delivering uh, your unique value to your customers. And so today we're gonna to be approaching marketing automation from that more strategic lens. So with that said, uh, marketing automation is using technology to automate routine marketing tasks and workflows. And most likely you're already implementing and using some elements of marketing automation in your day-to-day -day marketing work. So for example, if you're scheduling a newsletter to be sent out in advance, that's a great example of how marketing automation is already present in some of the tools that you're using to kind of streamline your process and make things easier. But over the years, uh, most recent years, marketing automation has really progressed to be a shift away from this traditional one-size-fits-all marketing 
to become more of this customer-driven approach. So it's moving away from the mindset of bulk email communications uh, to communications that actually fit who your audience is and what they want to hear from you. So that's what sets marketing automation apart. It's this emphasis on personalization and sending the right content and the right communications to the right person at the right time in order to start moving them along in their customer journey with you and also to be reducing that manual effort along the way. So with this said, marketing automation helps you build digital customer journeys that over time scale your marketing efforts because that manual effort in communicating with your leads or your customers or your prospects, all of that manual effort is reduced. And so by automating different touch points and different communication points along the customer journey, you can start to nurture these relationships with your contacts and take them to the next level with personalized marketing experiences that speak to them. And so as a result, this personalized approach to marketing actually helps you better achieve customer loyalty by showing your contacts that you understand them and you understand their needs. But we'll be digging a little bit more into creating customer loyalty later on in this webinar. So stay tuned uh, for some more info on that. And as a result um, of all of this, let's talk a little bit about marketing automation on a product level. So marketing automation is really composed of two main parts, a trigger and the actions. And now a trigger is really the event or the starting point of an automation, which can also be called a workflow, that defines who joins the automation. So which of your contacts is going to be enrolled into this uh, marketing automation workflow? And that could be any touch point along the customer journey. So for example, it could be somebody's birthday, so when it's your contact's birthday, we can send them an automated message to wish them a happy birthday. It could be when your customer fills out a form on your website. It could be when your lead has converted to a customer. There's endless types of events and interactions that your customer has with your company that can serve as a trigger to kick off a marketing automation workflow. But what happens after the trigger collects a contact? And that's what the actions are all about. So the actions are really the building blocks for an automation. They're the series of emails or texts that are sent to your enrolled contacts. An action can also be a condition to set paths for your contacts, so that way the communication is more personalized to them. It can also be a time delay, so that way you're spacing the communications out based on how your customers want to be hearing from you. And also, depending on your tool, it could also be to perform a type of action and sync some information back to your CRM. So together, triggers and actions make up and produce marketing automation that then enable you to be sending the right message in the context of your customer's journey. So let's take a look at uh, some practical examples of what it means to be automating different points in the customer journey and to be thinking about what types of communications we want to be sending uh, to those who want to hear from us. So in this pre-purchase phase of the customer journey, which is also this awareness and consideration phase, communications can really be based on cultivating brand awareness and providing the right resources to people in this awareness and consideration phase to help them understand your product or your service offering. So in this phase here, marketing automation can be used to, for example, be nurturing leads when they aren't yet ready to buy and to help you make this process more streamlined. In the purchase phase, so once your contact has moved from lead and converted to a customer, the communications that you're sending through marketing automation should be engaging and can provide a great first impression. So that could be an onboarding experience. Um, it could also be providing your customer with information to help make them feel a sense of trust with your company. And later on and down the customer uh, journey, if we're kind of visualizing this as a path with your company in this post-purchase phase, so your, uh, your customer um, has been with your company for a while and now it's time to start focusing marketing automation on retention, uh, loyalty, 
and even expansion. So how can we upsell? How can we cross-sell? And how can we use marketing automation to support us uh, in this way? So marketing automation can help you just not forget about your customers. And if your customer base is growing, you want to make sure that you have some automated touch points to keep your current customers happy, because that's a whole new level of engaging with your customers. And that in turn can help to increase your customer's lifetime value. But of course, thinking about communications and what communications to share with your customer is pretty tricky. Uh, so Josephine, what would you say is a common mistake that people make when thinking about uh, how to communicate? Um, well, a very classic mistake uh, within marketing is that the strategy of the marketing isn't necessarily aligned with the strategy of the company. So the first thing we usually uh, give advice on is to make sure that you sit down and look at before we start painting the picture of our marketing strategy, where are we heading as a company? Um, for instance, we are wanting a, we, ha we have a goal on a 15% growth annually, or we want to be the leading supplier uh, on the European market. Um, then the question is, do we, from a marketing perspective, know which customer base has the biggest priority or the biggest potential? What product line is uh, our focus to, to get us there. So we can we, we see this a lot that it's not necessarily aligned between the overall strategies and the marketing strategies. Another aspect um, when it comes to this is um, have we really looked into ourselves? Of course, we want to derive from the customer and we will, we will talk about that just in a while, but before gathering the entire marketing department, have we done the homework of really looking into who are we and why do we do what we do every day and so that we are aligned with what is the message that we want to send so before gathering the marketing department and, and painting that picture of what messages we want to send to the market who are we and what are our core values as a company and why do we do what we do and if these questions aren't answered it's quite difficult to start pushing out product information and, and information regarding your services throughout the different marketing channels. And at least if you are hoping to, to revolutionize your customer's experience with you as a supplier. And there are different ways of making that a bit simpler. Um, I don't know about you, but back in time, there were a lot of fluffy vision and missions floating around. And, some things that more and more companies are starting to do is to turn these fluffy visions into a why and a we statement. We've been on this journey ourselves, really trying to simplify our, uh, our core. And this is a very good way to make it more easy to grasp internally, but also for the customer and, and get a commitment throughout your organization. And because if we are marketing ourselves in a specific way, we of course have to make sure that we deliver on it. And from there, we believe that we are ready to start mapping out how we want to translate this into a clear message uh, throughout our channels. But again, uh, there are different ways when we are communicating with customers. In every interaction that we do, we, of course, want to have a positive uh, effect um, with every encounter. And, and we believe that everything we do should make our customers come closer to us and we of course want to win their loyalty and trust and deliver value and to do so i mean every company has three different competitive edges to, to work with in this case one is of course the the different products and services that you're offering um, but the question here is that are they totally unique we believe that we ask this um too rarely because of course we hope that our products and services are super unique and we strive to at least showcase them in such a way that we are often not alone. And this is one of the many reasons why we believe that we shouldn't put all of the marketing budget on product specific marketing solely. Another aspect that we have is of course how we communicate. So our marketing and communication, how well we deliver emotions and our why or we statement in, in all relevant channels. Unfortunately, though, as you probably already know, that all companies 
and competitors out there are trying to push through the overwhelming marketing noise out there. And this is also one of the reasons why we need to be on point in our communication. But there is one thing though that no one can take away from you when it comes to, to your competitive edge. And this is of course, our own behavior in every encounters we have with our customers and prospects. And this is an active competitive advantage that unfortunately more and more companies are losing while focusing on digitalizing their organization. And the best customer experience is of course when all of these three aspects are aligned. For instance, when, when we are pushing out information on our products uh, through our marketing and communication, have we also thought about when we are delivering leads, perhaps based on this? Do we have a sales process that is in line with this? Can we then take care of these leads in the best possible way? So, so one of the different um, points we want to spend with you here is to make sure that you don't only focus on the digital aspect. Having all these three aligned uh, is key. But now we've been talking about our own organization, but of course, one of the main things here is deriving from the customer. And to be a bit more specific in regards to that, I mean, when starting using new tools, as, as it is with every hype technology, looking at the root cause of the initiative should of course be your starting point. However, all too often we, we let the cool functions and possibilities dictate our strategies rather than proceeding from a customer perspective. And when going after automated marketing, we recommend starting by inventing your touch points with the customer as they are appearing today. And don't focus too much on external communication only. But by identifying the internal flows taking place, pre and post customer interactions as well, and you're laying the ground for effective automation strategy. So the touches here is that make sure you know your audience, define their buying process, but also have a clear picture of how do they actually want to be reached so that you are leaving a positive mark. And something that we see way too often is that we get super excited with all the cool products that we have, rather than focusing on what is the actual need of that specific customer leading to an, an unfortunate situation where we accidentally try to sell dog food to cat owners. And that of course is the, the opposite to what we're trying to achieve because when we are working with marketing automation, what we're trying to do is of course create more customer loyalty. And on that note, when it comes to customer loyalty, um, we should keep in mind that, that that is why we are doing marketing usually, trying to create as much loyalty as possible, tying the customer even closer to us. We usually talk about two layers or two different types of loyalty, uh, emotional loyalty and rational loyalty. And some companies struggle to work with both aspects, which is a key factor when creating real ambassadors that are customers. And when we say emotional loyalty, we mean the feeling of being a part of something, like a community. And some refer to this as social proof. This is a feeling of mutual learning and cooperation, having a closeness between the consumer and the supplier. While rational loyalty, that is more having a sense of how is this relationship going to be beneficial for me as a consumer? How do I get a return on my investment? How is this gonna help me save time or be a source of knowledge? And both of these aspects are of course very important, but the real magic is when we are combining both loyal and rational loyalty. So the key takeaways here is to make sure you have a plan for how to create these ambassadors and also think about how are we loading our messages to the market with words that are appealing both from an emotional loyalty point of view and a rational loyalty point of view. And another aspect that we believe is important to look into before starting out with marketing automation is that when we are having encounters with our customers, 
we of course want to influence them in the best possible way. And we really believe that sales and marketing should work closely together. And many companies are already on this journey. But when we're trying to make a positive influence, we can see that many companies have a tendency of offering a lot of service. However, there are two aspects in, in having a positive influence on the customers. Companies are, and customers are more and more expecting new insights, a proactive approach. They want to be sold to. Service is nowadays a bit more of a hygiene factor. I don't know how, how you feel, but back in the days, it was, a wow factor when entering a web page and there was a pop-up saying, hi, how can I help you? Today's more or less a hygiene factor. So as customers, we are wanting more and more insights. In fact, the happiest customers that are leaving a store is, is those that bought more than they were planning for. So this is something that we can take into consideration when we are building marketing automation strategies. For instance, when someone buys product X, if we see a reason to also promote product Y in the same action, let's do that. And also focus on how can we bring new insights and challenge the customers in our messages. So think about the balance here. Because again, it hasn't always been like this. But the key takeaway here is that we are recommending being more proactive and bringing more value instead of focusing too much solely on bringing service and help in your marketing automation. And after, after using, we have now thrown a lot of different graphs on you and different, uh, different recommendations. After using all this uh, to paint a picture of your marketing strategy, we of course have some advice for you when it comes to choosing the right tools to support you on this journey as well. And Armanda, maybe you want to share with, with the audience here some, some tips and tricks while choosing the right tools. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's also the last part of this webinar. And uh, we have a few tips and tricks that could actually help you uh, set up, you know, start in a good way. Uh, first of all, it's find the right digital tools. And we know it sounds easy, but it really isn't. Um, if you look for any digital tool, you'll notice that you're in an area where you have no expertise on. So it's really hard to see which tools are good or which aren't. So what you can do is really look at the flexibility first, the complexity. I mean, your tool has to be flexible enough uh, to be scalable and to be you know, fitting your company's process. But you also wanna have the complexity to take it to the next level. But the thing is, on the other hand, you don't want to have it too complex. So we always say, I mean, don't buy a spaceship if you only need a bike. So really dive into what kind of tool do I need and does it give me what I want now, but also within three to five years. Um, the second one is competence. Um, always make sure that you have the competence either in-house, that you have somebody in a marketing department or in any department, uh, IT department, that has a lot of knowledge over uh, marketing tools, specifically the one that you want to purchase. And if they don't have it, look at a company that helps you along the way, not just a company that sells you the tool. I mean, you can buy any marketing automation tool there is, but it's useless if you don't know how to use it, where to focus on, and how to make sure it actually ends up within a circle of success. And last but not least, you need a tool that actually supports your workflows, and not a tool where you have to build your workflows around. Um, I mean, you know your, your, your company and, and your industry the best, and you know what, what is the best way of working. So you really need a tool that supports that. And um, last but not least, you have to, of course, integrate with your customer data. And that goes both ways. Of course, that goes into your CRM system. Um, I mean, data is nothing. Just data is nothing if you don't know how to use it or if you cannot use it. But also the other way around. For example, if somebody clicks on a newsletter or opens up different links, or what Josephine just said, if you know that they looked at product A or service A and they just purchased B, you want to have a trigger that helps you combine all the data. So that's actually the one about finding the right digital tools. The next one is always start small. Um, if the, the biggest thing, the biggest, how do you say, it, thing people do wrong is that they go into like with everything they have. I mean, don't buy more than you can chew. Um, it's very tempting to do so because you know if you want to do it, you want to do it big. You want everything automated and just go for it. But really start small. 
uh, start with identifying one customer process um, and then automate that one and see how it goes. Because with everything and also with starting something new like this, it's really important to just trial and error. Um, make sure that you measure up on how is it going, improve the way you're doing it and learn from it. And it's always best to start with one process so you don't end up with having 10 processes to monitor, not knowing where you can learn what. And a good example of a process, uh, point two, when starting small, um, is actually a process where you can automate a flow. This is an example of a marketing of, of our marketing automation tool where you can set up your own flow. For example, you can have a trigger that we just mentioned. So if I go to your web page and I fill in, all right, I'm interested to know, learning more, I can fill in a web form, everybody knows how it goes. Then we can set up a flow that automatically sends me an email saying, hey, good that you you know, wanted to know more about us. Uh, hey, Amanda, how are you doing? Glad to hear, we'll contact you. And then you can set up a delay that says, all right, if she hasn't responded for two days, we want to send her a reminder. Then I can get a reminder, then you can see if I open it. And actually, if you look down, down here, you can see the entire process, what happens if I did open it or if I did click on it. And um, this is also used a lot with events. What happens if somebody says they will attend the event? An uh, important part of this one is that you have different actions to take. You can, for example, say set up a delay, but I also want to refresh and see if this person is still within my list of interest. Um, you can send a text message. There are many options and it's just about finding and that, uh, what, what Josephine was saying about finding what fits your customer. It's not always about the way you want to communicate. It's about how your customer want to be approached. I mean, I like to send out emails, um, but maybe you don't like getting them. Maybe you prefer me sending you a text message or having somebody from the sales department call you. So you can take up on the steps within the process, but also in this part, start really small. Uh, last but not least, if I look at the tips, um, it's how do you say it? In Dutch, you say open door. <laughs> um, it, get everybody on board. Uh, you really have to create internal ambassadors um, to help you set this up, but also think along and be the one that actually, how do you say, pull the wagon. Um, make sure that you prepare for a marathon and not for a sprint. It is a long process. I mean, it is something that you set up now so you can benefit from it during a long period of time. Just throwing in something will not help you in the long run. Um, but this is really something that helps your entire organization. And last but not least, and I really think that is one of the most important ones, is align the behavior with your digital marketing strategy. What does it mean? Um, this is actually the circle I was just telling you about. Uh, for example, you really want people to react upon what you're doing. And that's why we're here with like the Lime and Sense, the behavior part, the CRM and the marketing automation. If I set up a marketing automation flow, for example, the website I was just uh, telling about, and um, then something happens, I mean, and then they click on it or they say I'm interested or whatever, then I can have an automated trigger going to the sales department that says, hey, you have to call Josephine because she just mentioned to us on our website that she's interested in red wine. So then I can call her and she's on the red wine list and I say, hey, I have a nice bottle of red wine. Um, and then things could actually happen because this is what we do when you align the behavior with the marketing strategy. But from a sales point of view, and that's where I'm at, I also needed the other way around. I actually needed to also adjust to the things that I'm changing. So Josephine likes red wine and next week I'm going to her and then she says, oh, Amanda, I just really feel bad on red wine. I'm actually switching to white wine. I want to change it in my CRM system without going into the marketing tool because I'm not a marketeer. Let's really let me stay away from that part. When I change it, I want the marketing automation flow to change along so that Josephine will be contacted when we have like a really nice white wine and not to be in the red wine flow anymore. Um, so this is how the circle of success actually goes round. You need the behavior. So you need the sales to act upon what's happening with the marketing. You need it the other way around. But also you have to start within the people, the part that Josephine was telling about. Um, so you need to think about what is it that we're going to and how we're going to, uh, how, do you say, how can we reach our contact group? So that's basically how you can start with your marketing automation flow. And these were our three uh, tips and tricks that we have for you. Um, this is also where the webinar ends, or at least you can ask all the questions that you want. I do think it's important to mention that if, if you're in the position with your organization that you want to look into this and you know, don't know whether, you know, if you need to start with finding out what is the behavior that we show, what is our strategy and how do we want to reach our people? Um, or if you already have that and you just want to start with using the tool, 
or if you already have a tool and you want to know how to get it connected with your data, feel free to contact us. But that's why we're here. I mean, you have seen this for the beginning, then you have Clio for the automation tool and I'm for the CRM. And this is actually how you get things really automated within your company. So feel free to contact us. We can help you think along and guide you along the way. Um, but yeah, don't hesitate to call us. So then I would like to say thank you very much for your time and interest. Feel free to put in the chat what you think of it. We always like feedback and learning from things. Um, and of course, always feel free to ask questions. I'm gonna see if there are questions already. None, so that means that we're really clear. <laughs> or that we're really, <laughs> we're not clear. No, um, we're just gonna hold in, uh, hang in here for a few minutes. And um, like I said, you'll get the webinar. Um, we're recording it and we'll send it to you by the latest of next week. But feel free to contact us uh, already if you have any questions. So thank you for your time and enjoy your afternoon. We're just gonna wait here. Bye. Yeah, and as we're waiting, I guess we can, uh, I'll just also mention, I think one of the points that you made, Armanda, about starting small mm -hmm. is really the most important thing to be thinking mm -hmm. about uh, if you're interested with marketing automation, because it shouldn't be replacing your entire marketing strategy, but it should be integrating into what you already have set up. So picking one of those uh, yeah. customer process that you already have and figuring out the best way to apply marketing automation is like a winning strategy to get started and to see how it fits in uh, with how you're currently working uh, with your communication. Uh, and I do see we have a question. So, oh, well, I don't see it. So if you can read it, that'd be really great because I yeah. think I'm clicking something wrong then. So our question uh, is, should you start with CRM or marketing automation? What would you say? Oh, yes, when you're muted. Well, that's, that's a first in this uh, webinar, at least. <laughs> uh, I think that is such a good question, and we get that so often. Um, we would usually say that, uh, since we're also recommending starting small, if you don't have a CRM in place, of course, you can start with marketing automation. However, our biggest recommendation is to make sure, because the CRM will forever be your foundation. It will be what can help you uh, pull out the different triggers that will then cause certain actions. So while you are starting small with the, with the marketing automation, we re recommend not postponing getting that foundation in place because that will then, it will be beneficial for you in, in many more aspects than only for the marketing automation. So that would be our recommendation. And if I exactly. can add, what we actually do in practice is that we start with the behavior. So we start with the lime intent. For example, what we did with a customer, we set up a workshop for a day where Josephine sat down with the marketing department, like what is it that you want to do? How you want to reach them? How do they want to be reached? And apart from that, we actually went to the CRM part, although we already picked the marketing automation, like how we're going to set up the tools. And then we implemented the CRM. So that was the base where you can have all your data stored and wait, but like it's been to take actions upon. And then we actually also involved the marketing automation. And for the real nerds among us, we can also make it towards the BI, a business intelligence a reporting part where you can actually see whether or not based on numbers, what did we do? What, what way of tools did we use the marketing automation? What sales objects did we do? And what were the results? So that's basically how we usually set it up uh, in practice, yes. Are there any more okay. questions so far? No more questions in the pipeline. Okay. All right, good. I think we say that reasonably uh, within the 35, 30 to 45 minutes. So like I just said, thank you very much for your time. Um, we're gonna close the webinar now, but hopefully we'll see you very soon. And once again, feel free to send us an email with your feedback. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.